a journey of faith over these last few weeks. We've been on a journey of understanding what it means to belong to Jesus Christ, what it means to believe in Jesus Christ, and ultimately where we will go is what it means to become what Christ intends for us. But really today is Believe Part 2, but I give the title of the message today, The Way Back Home, because it talks about what it means to be on a journey, to be somewhere where you don't really know what to do or where to go or how to deal with it, and understanding that God in Christ always helps us find our way home, our way to Him, and our way to a place of safety and comfort. You may not believe this, or maybe you would, between the years of 2008 and 2011, I was a suit salesman. Maybe that's where I got the good shoes, Rick. I was a an achievement test scorer. So that's a fun job, let me tell you. I was a house painter, actually painted an entire two-story arts and crafts house over in East Nashville. I think it still has the paint on it. I'm not sure. Maybe not. May have washed off by now. I uh, was an adjunct faculty instructor at Bethel University. I was a session, church session moderator. You probably wonder what that is. It's not really a very fancy or fun job, but I had that job. And I did do a little preaching too. I did all of those things. In fact, most of the time during those years, I held no less than two, most of the time three jobs. Some of the jobs didn't pay very much. Some didn't pay at all. And, and, and some were paid in other ways. I drove a thousand miles per week. And I remember, I'll never forget this, one morning I got out of my driveway, went to the end of my neighborhood, and I either go left to go one way or right to go the other way, and I had to call my wife and go, I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Where am I supposed to go today? What day is it? Do I go left or do I go right? Do I go to Springfield or do I go to McKenzie? And she goes, I don't know, but today's Tuesday. You've got to figure out the rest. <laughs> remember that? So that was my life. You might be wondering, how on earth did you get to that point where that was your life? Well, it's a long story. I, I know I keep saying this. Really, you need to read the book to understand all the ins and outs of that. Because today's a message about uh, our scripture today. It's not about me personally. But, but I will say this. I arrived at that point after a very difficult season. And what I would call a ministry failure in another state. And we had to get to the point where my wife and I sat down and we said, we've got to make some decisions. And one of the decisions we made together was we weren't going to move and we weren't going to do anything differently until we could get our children where we wanted them to be. We needed to provide them a stable home, a stable school environment, and really we wanted to be able to give them everything that we could. And so I agreed. And basically the conversation was she told me what I was going to do and I had to just nod and go, yes, ma'am, that's what I'll do which is why I ended up working those, those jobs and driving 1,000 miles a week. It's important to understand something. In ministry and in life, we deal with these kinds of situations. Uncertainty, difficulty, challenges. I, I wish I could tell you the life in Jesus Christ is going to be smooth sailing. And it's going to be smooth pavement from here on out for you. I wish I could tell you that. I wish I could say, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, once you make a, a, a move to believe in Him and to follow Him, that everything's going to work out just the way you dreamed it would and everything will be smooth. If I told you that, I would be lying to you because it won't. The life in Christ is difficult. The life in Christ is is challenging. The life in Christ is filled with potholes and narrow roads and running off into the ditch and trying to get back. And it is most assuredly filled with storms. And I know this because when Jesus called his first disciples, he took them in a boat and they had a ministry. And one time in that boat, what happened to them? They were faced with a terrible storm. I remember one of my dear seminary professors giving this sermon at my ordination service. And he said, Roger, at the end of that service, he delineated all of the storms and the trouble and the, the, the things that could come up in following Jesus and being a pastor or just being a Christian. And at the end of that sermon, he said, Roger, you need to know intimately that Jesus is in that boat with you. 
I'll never forget what he said. In fact, I, he gave me a copy of the sermon and I circled that and I underlined it and I kept it in a folder that was very important to me. That's the life of faith that we're called to believe. We're called to give ourselves to believe in Jesus Christ and this is what we find ourselves in. We're going to read today The Storm at Sea, Mark 4, 35 through 41. We've heard this before many times. In fact, we went through the Gospel of Mark verse by verse. But when we think about putting our faith in Jesus Christ and making it through the storms of life, these words are so important to hear again. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, he took them along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet! Be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, Jesus calls us, doesn't he? And he calls us to get up, to take a chance, and to cross on over to unknown places. When Jesus calls us, he calls us to stand up, to get up, to take a chance and to cross on over to unknown places. When we meet Jesus and his disciples in the Gospel of Mark, we understand that his ministry had grown, that his ministry had become quite popular, that people would come and crowds would come and thousands of people might come to him to hear him speak. So many people would come that he often utilized the boats of his disciples who were former fishermen to teach from. And on one of those occasions, Jesus says, look, let's get in the boat and go to the other side of the lake and let's see what's over there. Unknown places, uncharted territory. This is the life of faith in Jesus Christ. Now, I understand life is all about taking risks. And I've been told I'm somewhat of a risk taker a little bit. I'm one of those that's willing to, to push the envelope just a little bit, to try different things. And maybe that goes back from my childhood. I, I used to kind of push and see how far I could go before I had to pull back a little bit. So I understand. But as I've gotten older, as I've gotten wiser, I understand that you have to process risk. You have to think about what you're doing. You have to be prepared. You have to be ready. But I know that risk is part of ministry. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about Jesus sending his disciples. And do you remember how he told them to go? He told them to go with a full pack full of gear and you know extra shoes and clothes and money and all the resources they need. What did he tell them to go with? Nothing. Just take what you got on you. And he did this, you see, because he knew, and, and, and Jesus of course knew that they would encounter homes that wouldn't be welcoming to them, that they would encounter people that might be hostile to them. But he did this because he wanted their faith to grow. He wanted their faith in him to grow and their faith in each other to grow and their faith in other people to grow. See, that's what faith is about. Remember, the stuo, the Greek word means to give yourself over, to give yourself unto Jesus Christ and you have to trust him, but you've got to understand it involves risk. And you calculate those risks. You, you think about them. When our elders and I, we meet and talk about what we want to do as a church, I know I push them a little bit. And I, I, 
I tend to push us and say, well, maybe we can do this. Well, maybe we can take this step. And they always ask me questions. Well, what about if you thought this through? And I, that's why they're here. That's why God put them in our lives together, right? But we have to be ready to take a chance. I feel like if we ever get to the place where we're afraid to get in the boat and cross over, it's just time to drop the anchor and say, well, here we are. We'll just stay put. Because ministry and life and everything that's good about it requires some level of taking a chance. And following Jesus is no different. It's no different. When we do that, though, what happens? Boom. Storms come. I mean, it was a risk to have church here about a month ago, right? We sent everybody home, but we said, we'll do it. We can make it work. I know that there's only a foot of water in the parking lot. I mean, Bill's calling me on the phone saying, I don't know what to tell you. You probably ought to get out of there. I'm like, yeah, we got everybody out. But he was saying, no, you need. And I wish next time just say, no, Roger, you need to get out of there. He just said, maybe y'all. But I, you know, I took that to mean everybody else. You know, never would I have thought that within 10 minutes, Leah starts singing her song and within... You know, as soon as she starts singing, the water comes in, and within 10 minutes, we're on the stage, and there's two feet of water, 18 inches of water in here, 20 inches. Storms come. Storms come in life. Now, the Sea of Galilee, where the, or the lake of Gennesaret, however you want to look at it in the, in the gospel, it's the same body of water. It's a freshwater body in central Palestine, Israel, right? And it's a unique body of water, and it's very prone to storms. You see, it's about 600 feet below sea level, and, and it's warmed. It's a very warm body of water. Geothermal energy comes from underneath, and it warms that lake. It's a very warm body of water. And it's situated in that basin, surrounded by mountains, specifically to the east, high ridges and high cliffs and High mountains, And of course, you know, to the west is what? The Mediterranean Sea, which is kind of like our Pacific Ocean, Pacific coastline. It's a very cool body of water. And so what would happen so many times is that cool, moist water would come off the Mediterranean Sea. It would kind of land over that warm body of water on the Sea of Galilee. And then maybe some desert dry wind would push through and you would have violent, very violent very unpredictable storms. It happened then and it happens today. I've talked to many people. I, one of my dreams is to go to the Sea of Galilee, but I've talked to many, many people that say you're there, it's calm, and then bam, it's a major storm. And it's such a small body of water that the waves are, are fierce, fierce waves. Storms come in life. They came to the disciples and they were swamping the boat. And, and sometimes we can't avoid that. All we can do is react. All we can do is do our best. And so many times we see the true character of people, and maybe it's the true character of ourselves when those storms hit. What are the disciples doing as the boat is taking on the water? They're bailing the water out. They're fighting it the best they can. And what do they do? Jesus! You know, Jesus is asleep. That's how he rode out the storm. I'm just taking that. I mean, he, you know, storm's coming. I'm going to get under here, ride it out. I'm tired. I've, I've, I've taught all day. I've been preaching. I've been performing miracles. I need my rest. And they're fighting for their lives. You don't care that we're going to drown? You see, it proves our character a little bit when we face those storms that are most assuredly going to come. They don't just come on the Sea of Galilee from time to time violently and furiously. They come upon our homes from time to time. They come upon us at the workplace from time to time. They come upon us between the ones we love the most suddenly and violently from time to time. They come in our thoughts and in our minds from time to time. We, we see things and it, it hits us. And bam, we're in the middle of it. What do we do? It's a test. It's a test of our faith. It's a test of our character. And I fail so many times over and over. I disappoint myself when I fail in these storms. And I, I get discouraged in my, of myself. 
But I know, I know that the storm will make me stronger. Which is what it does and what we understand ultimately, finally, the authority of Jesus Christ is above every other authority. Because the Father gave Him that authority. Remember, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me, said Jesus. The Father granted Him that authority. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So what does Jesus do when the disciples are they're ready to jump ship? I mean, they're telling, well, I mean, we might as well give up. What are we going to do? You're asleep. You don't care. He stands up and he just says, quiet. Be still. Everything stopped. You see, that's the kind of authority we need in our life. The kind of authority. Are we willing to give Jesus that kind of authority in our lives to allow him to rule over our whole life? We may be dealing with addiction. We may be dealing with depression. We may be dealing with anxiety. We may be dealing with anger. We may be dealing with whatever emotion or whatever circumstance, whatever storm life has given us. And can we say to Jesus Christ, you have the authority over all of this in my life. You have the ability to make these things go away. Do we have that kind of faith? Because if we do, the good news is, He will. Because here's the thing. Jesus is in the boat with us. It's not like he's just said, you go over to the other side. You, good luck. (laughs) You know, I wish you well. Thanks for believing in me. Have fun. It's not like he said, you just go live your life and Everything that comes your way, good luck. He goes with us. He's in the boat with us. Maybe he's asleep. Maybe he's a little calmer. Maybe he's trying to figure things out in his way. But he is with us. The scripture could be no more clear to me than that. And I think that, in understanding that, changes things. Should. It should. I'd say about halfway to the time of uh, this fun life that I narrated for you at the beginning of the sermon today, about around halfway through that, you know, 2010 or so, uh, I, I decided to try to do some things. So we were very fortunate. We bought a house, but it was about half the size of our old house that we had to leave. So, but in God's grace, We had a full, unfinished basement. So what was full, unfinished basement? That was Roger's storage. And I had boxes of everything. I had tools, and I had sermons, and I had notebooks, and I had musical instruments, and I had everything you could think of. And for a couple of years, because I didn't have time to even know where I was going that day unless my dear wife told me where where I'm going. And from that point on, she said, today's Monday, you go here. Today's Tuesday, you know. So you just tell me where to go, and I would go do it, you know. I didn't know what to do. But around 2010, I said, I need to get my life in order. And I need to start organizing. And of course, I had a basement and it was a leaky basement. Show me one that isn't, right? So I had moved little areas. I had little paths where the the leaks would. And when it would rain real bad, I'd clean it up and keep things dry and all those good things. Had a nice dehumidifier that I would drain out. It was really great for watering trees. For some reason, it made a tree become humongous. I had the dehumidifier water it's probably some mineral in it that would kill us but who knows you know it made the tree grow but you know I was starting to get things together I was feeling good about myself ah I got it together I'm getting it going I got some outside projects some inside projects gonna get it organized and then what happens in May 2010 May 1st we got seven inches of rain May 2nd we got another seven or eight inches of rain And you know what's happening to my storage area, right? It's just filling up. Thankfully, we were spared. Our home was not flooded. Nothing like what we experienced a month ago. But I was was worried. I was frantic. I was freaking out. And I was running boxes upstairs and stacking them up in the living room. I was trying to take them in 
put them up higher on shelving. I was, I was trying to know what to do and, you know, how bad is it going to get and what, what's going to happen? And one of them gets toppled over and there's just paper on the floor and I'm picking all this paper up and boxing it up and there's a notebook with a sermon in it that I'd kept folded up and it said, Roger, remember, Jesus is in the boat with you. From Dr. Perry. I'd kept it, circled it, put it in a safe place, and there it was on my web basement floor. And then I think at that moment I realized something. I realized a power. A power that can only come through faith in the one who is with you every step of the way. You know, my life was really not bad. It was great. And it is great when I think about all the blessings that I have. In our lives, I know we have difficulties and troubles and challenges and struggles, but when we think about how much of a blessing it is and how great it can be and how much God is giving us, it changes everything. And then when we understand He's with us, always with us, all the way, we can make it through anything. See, that's the faith that Jesus wants to give us. It's not easy. You know, you got to go to uncharted territory. You got to go through the storms and you got to submit to his authority. But it's the kind of faith that I would never want to live without. I would never want to have another day of my life without Jesus at the helm of my life. I would never want to imagine going one other day without Him guiding every step I take. And you see, when you go through all of those challenges and you move far away and you, you, you sit down with your loved ones and you try to figure out where to go next, having that kind of faith is what leads you home. And it's a home built by the hands from the One who gave us His only Son. It's a heavenly home. It's a home and a kingdom that we have here today. Just a little bit that we get. And it's a great home. And it's the way back home.